good morning dear students today we are going to learn uh, about bird migration uh, what is migration migration is the periodic passing of animals from one place to another animals when it moves from one place to another periodically then we are calling that property that behavior as migration it is a two way journey two way journey and um, for what all purpose they are doing this migration mainly for breeding and also to find some suitable nesting place and we can classify birds into migratory and resident birds what is the difference uh, all birds are not migratory so there are some birds which will not migrate Uh, will not migrate even for once you know, during their life cycle. Such birds are called the resident or sedentary birds. Uh, at the same time, there are some birds. They they usually do migration frequently over long distance and also for short distance. And such birds are called the migratory birds. Then we are going to see which are the different kinds of migration. First is latitudinal migration. Latitude. Latitude means from north to south. Uh, in the same way, the birds that is uh, migrating in that direction. Direction means you know, from north to south and vice versa. Vice versa means from south to north. To and fro. Uh, in which direction? North to south. Such type of migration is latitudinal migration. Usually the birds do this latitudinal migration to avoid the winter. And with the return of the summer, it again returns to the north. All the birds, uh, those who were migrated to south, they will return to north again with the uh, coming back of summer. Example for uh, such birds that is doing latitudinal migration are American Golden Plover. Scientific name is uh, Pubialis dominica. It passes nine months of winter, where eight thousand miles away from its home, uh, home place or its native place, where it is spending in the south plains of Argentina, that much distance away from its native place. This is the picture of that bird, Pubialis dominica. Next type of migration is altitudinal, altitude, high altitude, low altitude. Uh, it's a vertical migration. What is altitudinal migration? It is a vertical. That means from low altitude to high altitude and uh, vice versa. Um, in mountain regions, some birds reside in summer and uh, with the advent of winter, it again comes down in plains. Uh, that is altitudinal migration. Example for the birds, uh, while writing all the different type of migration, you need to call some examples. Uh, in the case of altitudinal migration, the birds showing such type of migrations are grebs. Grebs, I will show you its image. This is grebs. Then birds of ants. This is that bird. Uh, it is from Argentina. Then willow, a termigan of Siberia. This is that bird. Uh, this all bird, they take a migration, regular seasonal migration uh, altitudinally. In India also some birds are doing this altitudinal migration. Uh, can you give examples? Examples are common woodcock. This is the common woodcock. Bush chat is there. This is bush chat. Then uh, Scolopax rusticola, this is uh, that bird. They are also do this altitudinal migration. Uh, what is the pattern of their migration? They migrate from plains to the slopes, that means the valleys of Himalayas. And with the return or uh, the advent of uh, winter season, it returns again to the plains.
This is altitudinal migration. Next, longitudinal. Longitudinal means east to west migration and vice versa is longitudinal migration. Uh, example. Example is uh, Starling. Starling, this image is shown here. It migrates from eastern Europe to Atlantic coast. For what? To avoid the chilling cold of winter. To avoid uh, high winter, high cold, chilling cold, that boat used to migrate from East Europe uh, to Atlantic coast. Then partial migrations are, uh, are, all the, are also there. Partial means uh, it's not complete. With what respect it is not complete? Uh, if you take a species of uh, bird, uh, the whole individuals will not participate in migration. Only a part only migra uh, participate in migration. Um, such type of migration is called partial migration. And example is bluebirds and blue jays of Canada and North United States. They migrate to South Wales. Why they are migrating? To mingle with the sedentary populations of the southern states. I already told you that uh, if we consider a species, uh, only some group uh, show the behavior of migration. So, uh, the one that is doing migration, they migrate to South Wales uh, to mingle with its own sedentary population that resides there. Next is seasonal migration. As the name indicates, it is a uh, migration behavior that is taking place according to season. And uh, we, next we are going to uh, familiarize uh, some birds that is doing uh, such type of migration according to season. First is summer visitors. Summer visitors means these birds uh, can be located only during summer where in Britain examples nightingales, cuckoos and sips. They can be located in Britain only during summer season. Uh, they visit this area by the arrival of spring season. From where it is coming to here? From south. Um, before that we need to understand what is spring, spring season? What is the nature of the climate? Uh, it, is a, it is a weather or climatic period between winter and summer. Okay. So, uh, that climate means it is not that much cold, but it is uh, gradually getting hot. It is a, a very optim uh, optimal period for the plants to bloom, to undergo this breeding. It is a very good climate. So, by uh, during the spring, these birds come from uh, south. And by the arrival of autumn again, these birds again leave to their native place that is south. Then winter visitors. Examples for such birds are uh, snow, bunting and red wing. They arrive in autumn from where? From north and stay there throughout the winter season and with the advent of spring it uh, again fly towards the north coast from the south. Then birds of passage. Birds of passage means we can locate such birds uh, for a short time. Uh, almost twice in a an year. And uh, on the, um, um, when we can locate those birds on their way to colder or warmer countries during spring and autumn. During spring and uh, autumn, during their migration from uh, migratory um, passage to colder or warmer countries. That period, we can locate such birds, birds of passage twice during a year. Then vagrant or erratic or irregular migration. As the name indicates that migration pattern is not regular. Uh, it is not uh, having a um, peculiar pattern or anything like that. After breeding, threshers, herons, warblers, cuckoos, they all do, uh, doing such type of migration. The nature of such type of migration is that uh, the whole herd, that group, is not moving in the same direction. Instead, they go to astray. Go to astray means they are scattering to different directions. So, that is uh, that uh, erratic or irregular migration. Example, seabirds taken away by hurricanes uh, or to far away places from its home seas. Because of hurricanes, seabirds are taken away to far away places from its home seas. 
this one example for erratic or irregular migration. Then climatic migrations also are there. What is the reason for such migration? Uh, daily or seasonal change is the prime reason to undertake such type of migration. Example, north-south migration of ducks and geese. Then elemental migration also there. It is uh, because of the uh, shortage of food. Then gametic migration also there. Uh, for what purpose uh, such type of migration takes place? For the sake of successful reproduction, the birds migrate to some special environment. Next, we are going to see the modes of flight in migration. Diurnal and nocturnal flight. Regarding that, diurnal flight means flight that taking place during daytime. Which all birds are doing that? Crows, pelicans, pelicans. Image is shown here. Nocturnal means uh, birds uh, take uh, their flight during night time. Examples, sparrows, warblers, thrushes, etc. Then range, range of, uh, up to what distance it is migrating. Range of migration. It varies. Uh, if we take the case of Himalayan snow partridges, it cover only 1 or 2 miles. But uh, coming to Arctic turn, uh, it migrates about 11,000 miles. And uh, uh, Amur falcons, uh, if we take the case of this bird, it migrates around 30,700 miles per year. Uh, it is the bird that is covering the uh, most farthest distance. It is about uh, 13,700 miles per year. The next is uh, regarding speed and duration of migration. Average flight velocity of most small birds is 30 miles per hour. But uh, if you take the case of Indian ships, it is the bird that is uh, flying uh, in maximum speed. What about its speed? 170 miles per hour. And regarding the duration, most of the birds fly 5 to 6 hours per day. But in the case of golden plover, it, uh, it uh, flies for uh, 2400 miles non-stop continuously. It is a world, rec uh, world record holder. From where to where it used to migrate from H Hudson Bay and Alaska to South America. It, migrate, it used to migrate from Hudson Bay and Alaska to South America. Next is segregation during migration. Uh, if you take the case of Kingfisher Swifts, uh, they travel in separate separate companies, separate separate groups. Uh, if, uh, in the case of swallows, vultures, etc., uh, they travel in mixed companies of several species. And in some birds and uh, birds, the male and female individuals travel separately. These are the pattern, segregation, grouping during migration. When altitude of flight, it vary, and uh, most of the birds fly close to the air. And uh, most routine migration occurs uh, about 3,000 feet above the earth. But some birds during night, it uh, it is it used to fly about 5,000 to 14,000 feet uh, high above the earth. And uh, some birds are there. They even cross the Ants and Himalayas at altitude of 20,000 feet or more. Then regarding the routes of migration, which are route they are selecting. Um, they follow a definite line of flight. And usual routes are uh, sea routes uh, they select. Uh, coastal routes are there, river valley routes also they used to prefer, mountain routes are there. These are their usual uh, pattern of routes, routes of migration. Then regularity, regularity of migration, uh, they show regularity uh, with respect to time of arrival and the departure. Uh, even if there is irregularity, see weather. Uh, irrespective of that, they show regularity in their migration. The order of migration. What is the order uh, as they migrate? Adult males migrate first. Yeah, it is followed by adult females. And in the back uh, will be the young ones. Then causes of flight in migration. What are the causes? 
few uh, important theories are there uh, to explain uh, this will be the reason for the birds to make a uh, migration first uh, theory uh, it is that some environmental stimuli are prompting the bird to uh, start a migration which are those stimuli shortening of daylight scarcity of food increased cold and stormy weather increase of atmospheric pressure all these things stimulate or prompt a bird to undertake a migration to better suited places then gonadal stimulus also there now the birds uh, who are undeveloped or having uh, defective reproductive organs they didn't develop an instinct of migration and uh, in such birds the, uh, the migration is mainly for breeding purpose the metabolic hypothesis there uh, that hypothesis tells that before uh, a bird starts its migration it uh, it uh, start to accumulate fat and other metabolites in the body for what purpose as a energy source to meet as they uh, as they spend more time for migration for flight that time it needs more energy to meet that energy requirement they are storing fat and other metabolites that storing is a uh, metabolic change and that change stimulate that bird to migrate and we know that fat is more advantageous over glycogen uh, with respect to the energy content and also the fat produce more water to cope up with high rate of metabolism and breathing that also an advantage for the bird during the flight then thyroid hormones thyroid hormones bring some uh, changes in metabolism of the birds and that change also compel the birds to migrate then anti pituitary hormone some theory is telling that there is one anti pituitary means some hormones are there that is functioning against the pituitary function an anti pituitary hormone is there uh, it it regulate the migration then multifactorial hypothesis multifactorial hypothesis tells that there are so many uh, external factors are there that is stimulating uh, the bird to initiate a migration uh, so uh, migration is the outcome of various factors uh, and uh, it there stands to uh, chances are there to say that it is an accurate behavior and uh, and also it is an intelligence associated social behavior in all those way uh, multifactorial hypothesis is explaining uh, the that instinct of migration in birds then advantages of migration what are the advantages the bird will get suitable climatic condition uh, it may get new and abundant food supply uh, the bird will, uh, will increase the space for breeding and nesting uh, it can experience long hours of daylight for searching for and also as they move from one place to another there is more chance to uh, get gene exchange with the individuals of other far part then evolutionary origin of migration uh, there is one theory it is telling that uh, in the ice age as uh, the condition is warm and uh, as there is uh, enough is, uh, food uh, food is present that time the home place native place of almost all birds is in the northern hemisphere and as the uh, beginning of ice age means yeah, as the climate become too much cold then all birds migrate to southern hemisphere and uh, with the end of the ice age as the uh, that chilling cold climate subside then again it migrate to northern hemisphere such a behavior exists in uh, in a very old uh, old time birds and as a uh, remnants of that behavior the present day birds also show migration it is a brief recurrence uh, it's a uh, is telling that the behavior migratory behavior shown by the present time birds is a brief recurrence of the ice age event there is one theory another theory tells that uh, usually um, the actually the ancestral home of bird is in south 
and uh, some uh, migrate to no to prevent overcrowding because us all those uh, used to uh, spend their time in one place that may lead to overcrowding to avoid that and also to avoid competition some move from south to north and they return to south only when for nesting and breeding purpose that is another theory then there is a, another uh, more convincing theory it is uh, telling that migration is an evolutionary adaptation as a part of evolution uh, for uh, meeting the adaptive values they develop that behavior and that behavior is inheriting from uh, one generation to next there is another theory then next is uh, we are going to understand about uh, how the birds uh, get the navigation or orientation in what direction it need to flew uh, it need to fly uh, different views are there um, gustav kramer is a german ornithologist uh, he told that according to him the bird find its direction uh, by considering the sun position of the sun it use sun as a compass for orientation then according to france so uh, he is also a German ornithologist. He proposed that uh, the nocturnal birds, in the case of nocturnal birds, uh, they select the direction by taking stars uh, as a mean to find their direction. And uh, also, obviously, uh, some birds uh, select uh, some topo topographical features like landmarks, great rivers, valleys, coastal lines. Or uh, their uh, <coughs> landmark for uh, finding their direction to migration. Then, according to Von Middendorf and Henry L., uh, they uh, tell that they explain that the bird uh, migrate in response to its magnetic field and also how their inner ear reacts to the mechanical Coriolis effect produced by the rotation of the earth. I will explain what is Coriolis. Coriolis effect means uh, it is the deflection, if deflection taken by object. Uh, object means it is not connected to the ground firmly. And uh, as it travel long distance around the earth, because of the movement of the earth, it experiences a deflection, a change in its direction. That means, birds, as it fl fly over the earth, uh, as the earth also moving, its movement, uh, its movement uh, gives some influence over the direction of the birds that are flying. So, uh, that is Coriolis effect. The deflection pattern that happened to, a, to an object that is not firmly connected to the ground um, as they travel long distances around the earth. Um, um, more clearly, I will explain it using this picture. Here you can see a circle and uh, in its four side we can see four balls. <coughs> uh, if a person is sitting here, throw this ball uh, to another person that is uh, who is sitting just opposite to him. And this ball will directly come to his hand if this big circle is static instead if this circle also start to rotate then if this person throw that ball to this person it will not reach him instead it uh, deflect and comes to this direction why it takes place because of the movement of this big circle Coriolis force is that one uh, the object is deflected. Why? And also that object is not firmly attached to this uh, big circle, that ground. So it is deflected. Why? Because uh, the uh, big circle also moving. And that movement causes that object that is not firmly attached to this ground, this big ground to deflect to another direction instead of the straight one. That effect is Coriolis effect. Okay, I think it's clear. In the similar way, as the bird flies over the earth, uh, the, its direction is influenced by the rotation of the earth. 
according to von Middendorf and Henry L. The birds uh, find its location based on this uh, theory. And uh, homing instinct are also there. That enables the birds to return to a goal. Uh, in all birds, there is an instinct, homing instinct is there. To return to a goal, uh, where we can see in the case of ants, bees and a carrier pinch. That also there. And according to few naturalists, uh, the bird learned this uh, migration by their own experience. And that navigational ability is simply inherited one. It is an instinct one. Be uh, why? Because young birds are making uh, or uh, they are taking, play, uh, taking their migration in the same direction <coughs> in which their parents uh, got. So, uh, that may be a inherited instinct that is according to the viewpoint of some naturalist okay with this we finished the eighth chapter and today's section thank you